Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to use the Juice DSP module to build a state variable filter. And this is a great way if you're just getting started with audio programming and just getting started with Juice to actually get something up running up and running fairly quickly without a whole lot of work. Uh, so we're going to go through that today and this will be a multi-part series. So in this first one, we'll just show you the very basic implementation of the filter. So before we get started, I'd like to remind you about our audio programmer community. So it's a place where audio programmers from around the world gather and uh, network and get to ask and answer audio programming questions. So we help each other out. We're from all different backgrounds, all different skill levels, and we welcome you to join. And it's free, and you can join via the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community. Also, we have the Patreon for people that would like to see more tutorials like these and the various events that we do. And you can actually contribute to our Patreon for various rewards on patreon.com forward slash the audio programmer. So we will go ahead and get started. And by the way, both of those links are below in the description. So we'll go ahead and get started. We've created a juice uh, project. So this is just a plugin project where we have our regular source files here. And what we want to do first is we want to add the DSP module to the list of modules that we're going to be using. And so to do this, we just go to the plus and then add a module, the global juice modules path, and then juice DSP. And now we can see the Juice DSP module is in our list of modules. And now we will go ahead and save and open this up in Xcode. And by the way, I have a uh, presentation that I did not long ago on the basics of the Juice DSP module. So I won't be going through all of that again. Uh, I would just rather direct you to that video where it shows you the basic concepts of the Juice DSP module. Um, but you'll see that uh, we will implement many of those concepts today. So now we're in our header file and what we can do is we can actually create a filter object first. So what we'll need to do is we will need to uh, create an object of this long thing here. Okay, and now I will show you how to do that now. So since this is a juice object, first thing that we do is we precede juice objects with the juice namespace. And it's in the DSP namespace in our DSP module. So it's juice DSP. And then we just declare the object type here, which is state variable TPT filter. And then we have this uh, angle brackets where we put the type, the sample type that we want. So this would be like if you wanted to process and float or in a double, uh, double, um, the double values. And so we'll just do float for this time around. And so we want state variable TPT filter. And now we have to put the type that we want. Let's type float. I'll just call this filter. And there we are. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build this, make sure that I've declared the object correctly. And we can see that we have. So build succeeded there. So far, so good. Now we'll just take a look at some of the other methods that we have in our state variable filter class. And just taking a look at the description very quickly, we see that we can do low band and high pass filtering. And that uh, this is based on Vadim uh, Z. I won't say his last, try to try to say his last name, <laughs> uh, but Vadim is actually a DSP engineer, quite well-known en engineer in the industry that works for Native Instruments. And he has written a book on uh, modern analog, uh, analog modeling practices for filters. And it's pretty math heavy, but it's a pioneering book for, uh, for filter design. Uh, and so this is based on uh, some of his, some of his work. So let's go ahead and go down to some of the methods that we have here. So we have a set type method where we can set the type of filter is uh, that, that this filter is. So we have type. I'll just open this up at another tab. And we will see that we have an enum here where 
we can select between low pass, band pass, and high pass filters. And I'll show you how to implement that in a bit. We can also set the cutoff frequency, set the resonance. So pretty typical methods that we would see for a filter. Uh, and then we have the typical methods that we would see in any juice DSP, or for that matter, any sort of DSP uh, method or algorithm. So normally you'd have like a prepare uh, method where you have to pass in the sample rate, the buffer size, the number of channels that you want to process. You would normally have a reset method that, uh, so you know that these filters are going to have some complex mathematics inside of them. And the reset method just takes all of those, uh, all of those different variables within the filter and just resets them back to their initial state. Then we're going to have a process method. So we can process two different ways. We can either process using what's called a process context, which I will show you how to do in this tutorial, or if you wanted to do a sample by sample process, uh, process, you can do that as well using the method process sample, where you give it a sample from the audio buffer and it's able to process it. So, uh, so yeah, so that's how, that's how it works. So let's go ahead and start getting some of the setup done. First thing that we'll need is the reset method. So the juice audio processor already has a reset method that we can override. So we're just going to do that now. So we'll create a method called reset. Since it's a method that is declared in our juice audio processor class, and we're inheriting from the audio processor class right here, then what we want to do is we want to mark that with the override keyword or else it'll give us a warning. So then we will just implement this down in our plugin processor.cpp. And so this is void. We need the class type here and then it's reset and that's crossed out because that's a private we've we've put it in our private methods so that's the reason that you see it crossed out but since we're in the same class we can actually uh, use this use this method and in here we just want to say filter which is our filter object that we cre created just a few minutes ago and reset and there we go so now we can implement this in our prepare to play function. So prepare to play is a great place where we can implement this. This is going to be called uh, whenever the audio is going to begin to or get ready to start playing into the plugin. And we want to make sure that our uh, our filter is ready to take in those value values and that it doesn't have any sort of junk values left from the last time that it was playing audio. So we'll call reset in there. While we're in the prepare to play method, we also have this, uh, the prepare method that we need to implement. And we can see that it takes this process spec object. So if you're not sure about what process spec is, you may want to take a look at the uh, juice module, uh, juice DSP module presentation that I did. I'll put that in the description below. And the process spec is essentially an object that allows us to hold the sample rate of our plugin, the uh, buffer size, and the number of channels. So this is information that your DSP algorithm will need in order to properly process your uh, DSP. So what we could do is we could just create a DSP, uh, a process uh, spec object here in prepare to play. So this would be juice, DSP process spec. And I'll just call this spec. And now what we could do is we just want to declare all of these things. So we got our sample rate, maximum block size, and number of channels. So we got spec dot maximum block size will equal our samples per block. So this is a way that when our when when our plugin is getting ready to start playing, it just passes all this information back into your DSP algorithm, okay? Because it needs to know this information. Spec uh, sample rate equals sample rate. Spec num channels equals uh, get total num output channels, which should be two because we're going to be working in a stereo 
setting here. And then what we could say is filter.prepare. And we just pass in that spec object that we've created and we are good to go. So next thing you know, next thing we need to do is we need to go back to our state variable class and look at what else we need to do. So we have the set type, uh, so the type of filter that we want to set. So we will implement a UI a little bit later for this, but uh, what we'll do is we will start preparing the filter uh, or plugin for uh, when we actually implement a UI. So what what I'll do, so the way I'm thinking to do this is that we could maybe make an enum class and we will just call this filter type. And then I will just say that we'll have three different types of filters. We'll have a low pass, band pass, high pass. So these are essentially like, like ints almost where uh, you can just select between these three different types. And now we just need to actually put what those actual types mean and actually um, create our functionality there. So what I will do now is I'll create a filter type object. So I will say filter type, filter type, and then I will initialize it with filter type and we'll initialize it with a low pass argument there. Okay. And then let's create a let's create a method where we can actually select the, the filter type that we want. So we can say void uh, set uh, set type. And then what we will do is we will go into our CPP and we'll say void. And then we need our class name and then set set type. And then let's see. So we have this uh, the state variable filter class. We have this method set type. So we're going to need to now associate our enum with setting the type of our filter to low pass, band pass, and high pass. So that's what we'll do here. We can do this using, I'm thinking the best way to do it is using a switch, uh, oh, a switch statement here. So let's go ahead and implement this. So we can say switch. And what we want in here is we want our, our filter type, right? So, so we will just put that in as what our expression is. And now we want to say, okay, if the filter type is this, then we want this, we want the filter to set the type to low pass and so on and so forth. So, so first one is filter type. Make sure you use a capital F there and we could say filter type low pass. So if our filter type is low pass, then we want filter set type and now we just need to put our type in there so what we want to do is we need to declare this type of object here dsp state variable tpt filter type and then low pass okay so it's like a enum inside of an enum so we got juice dsp uh Sorry, I forgot the name. State variable TPT filter type. State variable, there we go. State variable TPT filter type. And then low pass. Okay, so that's that's a bit of a handful there, right? So that feels quite long to type out all the time. So maybe what I'll do is I will pull this out and let's just for readability let's just say using uh f type is equal to all of this uh all of this stuff here and then what i could do is i can go in here i could say f type like that that makes it a little bit more readable so we don't have to continue to type all of this every single time 
So now we just need to make cases for all of our other types. So I'll just copy this twice. And then we just need to change this to band pass and high pass. And then in here, same thing, band pass, high pass. And then we'll make a default where we will just set it back to low pass. Oh, wrong place. So this is in anticipation that at some point in the future we'll have a UI where we have a set of buttons and we'll be able to click into one of those buttons and that will change what the filter type is. Okay, so that's, uh, that's where we just set the type. So we're all good there. I can close that out and close spec out. And now what we'll do is we will just do a, a real kind of hack hello world of of filter uh, setting setting this filter to actually do something. So I can just get rid of all this commenting here. We can actually get rid of all this stuff. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the audio block class to actually do this. Okay, so, uh, so let's see, so let's duplicate this so I stay on the same site. And then we will go to audio block. So here we go. And now we're in our audio block class. So audio block is, so as you remember, going back to the state variable uh, filter process method here, we have this thing called a process context that we need to pass in. Okay, so this is a little bit, this is a little bit confusing and I think I don't know if uh, if this is the easiest way to to go about doing this, but uh, but this is the way to actually make this work. So, first thing is you have this DSP audio block class, which is a way of passing in uh, our our audio buffer into this filter algorithm. And normally, when you're so there's a video that I did in the past about one of the one of the biggest mistakes that people make in DSP processing, which is that normally when you're creating a DSP process from scratch, you normally have to create a DSP process for each channel of audio that you're processing. So if you were doing a filter in this situation, you were creating a filter from scratch, you would need to have a filter on, uh, for your left channel and a filter for your right hand channel. So the DSP class and the audio block and the way that this is processing is actually uh, is actually an effort from Juice to actually eliminate all of that complexity and just say, okay, you can just pass in this audio block and it will tell and it will actually do all of this kind of internally for you. So they've abstracted that out. Okay and uh, there's just a little bit of setup to actually do this. So we have this audio block object and we see that, uh, so this can be a little bit difficult to read, but I will walk you through it. So what we can do is we can create an audio block from an audio buffer. So we can see that the documentation here actually says creates an audio block that points to the data in an audio buffer. So an audio block is not a whole separate uh, set of memory that is holding all of your audio data. The audio block just simply points to the audio buffer. Okay, so that's, uh, so what we could say is we could say audio, auto, we'll do an auto and audio block equals, and we'll, oh, we need to do all of our, Namespacing again, juice, DSP, audio block. And once again, we need to set a sample type. Sample type will be float. And then, like we saw in the documentation, what I need to do is I need to just pass it in this audio buffer. Uh, I just need to pass in our audio buffer from process block. And so now we've created an audio block. So audio block is essentially an alias for your audio buffer. Okay, so it's just an, so it is your audio buffer essentially. <laughs>
Uh, then what we need is we have this we have this method or this object that is called process uh, process context non uh, replacing or process context non replacing. So we want process context replacing. So what does this actually mean? Process context replacing means that when you have audio that's actually coming in uh, from the outside in your DAW, it's coming into the plugin, that what happens is process context replacing means that I am going to take a piece of audio, I'm going to perform this DSP algorithm on it, and then I'm going to replace what was previously there with the with the new audio okay with the processed audio after the filter i should have pulled out my ipad to to actually write this down but i think you get the idea if you've seen my last tutorial on the audio buffers okay so we're actually writing new information into the audio buffer so what i could say is i could declare an object that's going to be called i'll call it context and then equals juice DSP process context replacing because we want to replace the audio that's coming in with the audio with the processed data that will uh, be run through our DSP algorithm. Once again, we need to give it a type and we will do float and I think that we just need to pass it in our audio block object. So let me just make sure that I have that right. So there are a couple different ways that we can that we can do this. And let's see. So we have our audio buffer and we have our audio block. So oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. That's, that could be a problem. So we want process context replacing and we want our audio block type. Okay, so that's that's what we created here, our audio block. Okay, let me make sure that I have everything that I need here and that should be fine. Okay, then from there we can go back to our process method and we can actually just uh, put our context into this process method. Okay, so let's just do that. And we can say filter dot process. And then we give it the context method. And that's, that's how you do it like that. Okay, now let's, let's set our filter to actually do something. So we will set our sample type uh, so we have this set cutoff frequency and we can set our, our our frequency that we want so we have a set as a default to low pass so what i could do is i could say filter dot set cutoff frequency and then i will give it a new frequency so let's do something where we can hear that it's actually filtering and i will just put it at 150 hertz right so that is how we will do that. And so that's fine. And I think we will be ready to go. So now we just need to actually build this in a DAW. Uh, I didn't do a new tutorial that actually shows you how to hook this up to a DAW, but I will in the very near future. Uh, so, oh, I forgot to put a semicolon after the enum here. So there we go. And what I'll do is I'll show you that very quickly. So if you go to what's called your build targets, uh, so that's this little space here at the very top here where you see the actual type of uh, the type of thing that you're building. What I could do is I could go into edit scheme. I'll click in there. And then what I could do is I could set an executable for my DAW to actually launch when I want to when I actually build this plugin. So I've just clicked in other and then I go to uh, I'm just going to go to Ableton. So I got Macintosh hard drive applications. And I got Ableton and I will choose that and 
close. And so this Ableton will actually launch when this is actually done building. So we see that we got a build succeeded. We're just building for VST3 right now. And now we have Ableton launching and so Ableton is launching. Okay, now we're back in Ableton. And what we could do is we could look into our plugin, look for our plugin. The default is your company. And then our plugin is called Basic SVF. We'll just put this on our audio channel three. And we see that we don't even have a UI for it yet. So all we'll hear when this plugin turns on is just the actual filtering that'll be happening at 150 hertz. So should sound low pass uh, filtered when we actually do this. So I will put a sample in here. So we will go with this little loop. Just turn this down slightly and I will turn it off here so you can hear the unfiltered. So we hear that that filter actually works. So our plugin is actually working and we've built a filter. So this is a good place for us to stop this tutorial. I just wanted to show you how to do that very basic implementation and actually get all of this running. So in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we will actually set up an audio processor value tree state and actually connect this up with the filter and actually get a UI going where we can select the filter type, set the filter frequency and the resonance. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you found this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time.